We're gonna do some stamping this morning. What we're doing is a uh, is a random rock stamp. Uh, some guys call it different around the country, flagstone or whatever else. This is Borderlands random rock stamp. When we do most stamps, um, depending on which ones they are, a lot of times we're gonna we're gonna double roll these. So we'll take a texture roller. It could be a slate like this one. Or granite, maybe a Spanish, depending on what stamp we're using for our, our main stamp. We're going to roll this first so we can get all that texture in there and then come over to the top with this one. Now, our method for doing, uh, for putting your release on, I know a lot of guys dip and roll, so they'll take this stamp, they'll dip it in there, they'll roll it a couple feet, and then they'll do it again, try to match it up, roll it a couple feet, and so on. And that's the dip and roll method. There's pros and cons to every method you're going to use. Um, what we do is is actually roll it on with paint roller and I just started doing this this year um, but before that I used to broadcast so I would take some and I would actually throw it on okay it tends to be a little bit messy you use a little bit maybe too much um, and sometimes you'll get areas where you don't have as much color as other areas um, this method here you take a half inch nap roller and you go ahead and roll on the powder so you can get it even up and down the curve and you're not going to have any areas that are going to be uh, really light or really dark depending on what type of method you use. I know uh, I know with a dip and roll method you're going to have dark areas for the first foot and then lighter areas after that depending on how often you dip and roll it. So it's just one of those things. Again, there's pros and cons to everything. So what we'll do is I'll go ahead and roll the slate first. That's pushing in all sorts of texture and also getting secondary. You're, you're getting twice as much color in that curve now. I'll go ahead and take my random rock and I'll get the end. And then I'm just going to go right over the top of that. And I go ahead and leave the stamp here so I don't have to pick it up and try to match that. I've gone ahead and trialed this, sprayed some piss on there. Went ahead and troweled it with a, a regular trowel, which has a flare on both sides. It's pretty smooth. You can see some areas that might be just a little rough, and that's not because it hasn't been troweled enough. It's because the flare on the back does not leave it perfectly smooth. So I've already sprayed this for a second time, and I'm going to use the finishing trowel. Finishing trowel does not have a flare on the back. And again, you just you wouldn't want to use this every day to go back and forth, but as a finishing tool, you'll be able to see it on how smooth that this gets. Me. And it's a huge difference. I gotta straighten out a couple little squiggles there, but I'll go ahead and put my powder on this and we'll go from there. Rollers from Borderline. These are actually the older style. The new ones have a nice curve in there and they're six inches longer so you don't have to bend over quite as far but you get a nice smooth roll in there what we'll do now is go ahead and we'll take a battery powered leaf blower I'm just going to blow off that excess powder there shouldn't be a lot of it because we're just rolling that on before when i used to broadcast that and throw it on we have a lot of powder that was left and so there'd be a lot of dust in the air when you did this with this method, you're you're going to lose use a lot less, but uh, you know there's you know less blowing in the air. I'll go ahead and cut this like normal. So we're going to take a I've already blown that off, and what Chance is doing here is just taking some mineral spirits or a paint thinner, any type of light solvent solvent, and you're going to go ahead and burn that. All you're doing is just getting the curve wet. Okay, so you're turning that powder into a liquid. I've had a lot of questions about, you know, I don't understand the, uh, you know, the whole method of using mineral spirits or paint thinner. Basically what you're doing is you're turning that powder into a liquid right now, so when that dries, it's ready for sealer. If you don't do that, you could blow it off, 
and then not do that and seal it, you're gonna use twice the amount of seal to soak into that dry powder. So by using a mineral spirits or a paint thinner, you're saving yourself a ton of money because you're putting that on there ahead of time, turning it into a liquid, and then in about 10 minutes, this will all dry, we can go ahead and seal that right away. There's no coming back and washing this the next day and, and doing all that. You should never have to come back if you do this correctly. What we're doing with the release, you're gonna have way more dark color on top. How we do stamping is we put a light color in the concrete. So our integral color for this might be a half a pound of, of taupe, walnut, something like that, just to give it a tone underneath. The secondary color is gonna be your release. That is gonna be, especially when you're double stamping this, that is gonna be probably 75, 80% of the whole color of the curb. So we don't even let the homeowner pick the integral color. They have to go off the chart for the release colors and they pick that color and I tell them, when somebody drives by your house, that's the color they're gonna see. But when they come up and look at it close, they'll see some light tones underneath. That's something that we're gonna choose that best corresponds with their rock at their house or a color that best goes with the release color that they chose. Um, that way you don't have that that one lady or one one guy that, that is taking two weeks to figure out what color they wanna use and then the colors they chose don't go together and then you basically gotta tell them what they need. Almost in a sense, don't ask them what they want, tell them what they need to go with their house. This particular job right here, we're trying to match their, their patio. Okay, they just had this done. This is a, uh, a walnut color. That's the release color over the top. But what they're doing with this is they're coming back and they're taking a pressure washer and washing off the amount of release they want to wash off. Okay, so they're getting that so they can see those light undertones. In this sense right here, we don't want to see all those light undertones. We want to see more dark color. So when this is all done and dry and sealed, it's going to be nice and dark. And the homeowner's not going to uh, say that that you cheated them out of color um, which I've had I've had happen if you're dipping and rolling you're not getting a lot of release on top so let's say 80 to 90 percent of your curb is the integral color so you got to put a lot of integral color in there and then you're just putting accents over the top if you do it the opposite way make your main color the release and do this method the color will be nice and dark and then the homeowner is going to say wow they made that nice and dark they didn't uh, they didn't cheap out on it because um, a homeowner typically, typically is not going to uh, complain about it being too dark. They'll complain about it being too light, like you didn't put enough color in, like you weren't spending the money that you were supposed to, to do the job. Hopefully you can see this, but once you've sprayed that the solvent on there, it's going to liquefy and show the true color. It's going to show the true release color. So if the homeowner is standing there, you can kind of give them an idea of what that color is going to look like. You can see the light colors underneath. I can see those you know light colors those integral colors underneath um, that's gonna lighten up over the next few days the dark color is gonna stay the color that it's supposed to be but the light color will lighten up so it'll show more of a contrast between the two colors um, but that's just a good way of, of kind of telling what the colors are gonna be after the fact random rock stamps or those type of rollers random rock Aussie cobble some of the other ones pretty aggressive rollers a lot of guys don't like to do them and they'll just strictly even do maybe just a Spanish roller um, slate or something that's not as aggressive because they get a lot of tearing. Well, that's not because of the stamp. That's because of other things. What sand you're using, uh, what your mixing ratio is, what your, you know, what, what chemicals you're putting in there to make those, you know, to make that work. You can't just do the same thing that you do for normal gray curb um, that you're typically going to do for uh, stamping especially aggressive stamps that's something that has to be adjusted for what you're doing this is about 20 minutes ago you can already see that that is starting to evaporate now this is in the shade um, so it's gonna take a little bit longer but as long as the curb isn't wet you can seal this because that residual uh, amount of um, paint thinner on there will evaporate right through the sealer if it is actually wet, that sealer could run down, and because it's a solvent, it actually could cut the sealer and make it thin and actually run down the front of the curb. So, like a spot like this, that's still wet. We wouldn't want to seal that. Um, you can see some of this in the sun is already starting to dry, and that was late after the fact. So, typically when you're done with every job and you have some sun or some wind, there's no problem sealing any of this. You really don't have to wait that long. 
um, to get it sealed. When you're doing an island and you're stamping, um, you, you want to make sure that you leave all your powder and your stamping a little ways back, a foot, foot and a half if you can, because you're going to have to trowel all that right there. And if you have powder on there, that's going to get really dark and you'll have issues with it sticking uh, because there's a powder in there and it's kind of a bond breaker, obviously. Um, so you want to leave that back a little ways. I probably should have went back a little bit farther, but this, these mixes are really, really easy to trial, so I'm not going to have any issues with that. But same with the stamp. Make sure you have the stamp a little ways back. Now, if you have a really big island and it's really hot, you know, start with that a little ways back. Make sure you put a towel over the top of that that's damp or wet so you can slow some of that evaporation so it's a little bit easier to, uh, you know, to take care of when you get back in there. We tried to start on a... Uh, curve here again because it's going to be a little bit easier running the machine by a little less hand work. Another thing you need to be aware of when you're doing this for a homeowner, we did that 10 minutes ago, 15 minutes ago, it's already evaporated. Okay, we're just doing this right now. Now, you have to let the homeowner know, hey, when we use this solvent to, to burn it or to do what we're doing, that is going to evaporate and it's going to look all dull and hazy and gross. If you decide to come back later in the day to seal it because you don't want to seal it the same day or something happens and they're at work and they come home to prevent that nasty message on your voicemail uh, saying how unhappy they are with the color because the color is not correct and, and whatever. Let them know ahead of time. This is a solvent. It will evaporate. It's going to look all dull and crappy until it's sealed. It's no different than putting a, a, a clear lacquer on, on some wood. That's what brings the grains out. A clear sealer is, is going to bring all the colors out and all everything will pop. It's, so you have to be aware of that and I tell every homeowner, don't freak out on me when you see it if it's not sealed yet. See this example, you should be able to see the slate roller in there really well in the sunlight. And because you're rolling that on there, you're putting twice as much release in there so you're getting the curve darker than what it would normally be just with a single stamp. Doesn't take any extra time hardly. Uh, we don't charge any extra for it. It's just looks better. It's a better product. And uh, we don't even tell them that we're doing that unless they ask if they're watching us. And we just kind of explain it to them. Before you start spraying, always try to test it in a place where, you know, inconspicuous or whatever else. Make sure there's no clumps coming out of there. Or else you'll blast that right on the curb. You thin coat. You get the air out of here. You thin coat. You don't want it running down the curb. If the homeowner is here, this is a good time to kind of show them, you know, what the actual color is going to be. But you have to remind them that this is going to be really dark, especially for a couple days, depending on what the weather is like. Um, because there's obviously moisture in that concrete that needs to evaporate through the sealer it's gonna be darker than what they imagined. So if they come home and say, hey, it's really, really dark, you just have to kind of relax a little bit and, and you know, let them know that it's gonna lighten up. The dark colors will stay dark, but those light colors underneath of the concrete itself needs to lighten up. Now, if you look really close, you can see where the lights and the darks are gonna be, and you can show them, you can point it out. All these light areas right here will really start to show up after a couple days. I liken it to really, uh, if you have a, a sidewalk and you dump water on it, that spot is dark than darker than the rest of the areas because it's wet. Once that evaporates, it starts to lighten up. It's no different with this. You know, this is after one coat. And what we do with this, as I've, I've spoken of in another video with uh, sealers that we use, this is a 25% solids acrylic. It's a solvent-based acrylic, and you're gonna have to look at you know your state and where you're from and what they allow and what they don't. But this is solvent-based. It's 25%, so it's technically considered a cure seal. So you don't need to put it on heavy. You just go ahead and, and put on thin coats. If it starts to really run down on you, um, then you're probably putting on a little bit too thick on those on those coats. It's like, uh, you know, it's thin to win. So go ahead and put a thin coat on. Let it sit for 10 minutes so that has, you know, some tackiness on top and I seal it again. Um, anything stamped uh, for my company, we go ahead and seal three times. I, I hit that three times. We're charging $3 extra a foot, you know, for colored and stamped, which doesn't take us that much longer. And I want to make sure that they're getting the best product they can. And if I have to seal it three times, and I'm gonna have to seal it three times to make sure it's nice and glossy and it looks looks nice and fresh. That's not gonna cost you a, a lot of extra money. That's just being 
you know, that's just being a, a basically a good company owner and, and making sure your product looks good when you leave. As you can see here, we have uh, the solvent that's evaporating. We still have a couple spots where it's a little bit damp right there. I don't consider that wet um, to where the, the solvent is running down. It's just a little damp, so I can technically seal, you know, most of this. That's not wet either, that's just damp. But when I get to the end here, it looks a little wetter, so I'd probably let that sit for another couple of minutes. That's all going to evaporate right through that, that sealer, and it's not going to leave any marks. It's not going to look darker. Um, you're not going to have any issues, but if it's actually wet, it would, it would kind of run down the curb on you, and you don't want that to happen. After a few minutes on that first coat, depending on what kind of sand you use and the chemicals and things like that on how tight the curb is, um, you know, how dense that surface is. If you have a, if you're using a mason sand and it's finer and you're, and you're using different ratios and you got that really tight on top, that sealer doesn't have as many pores to soak into basically. If you're using a concrete sand and it's really rough, uh, your sealer is probably soaking in. It's got to soak into all those pores and you end up putting two, three, four coats on there just to get a nice high gloss. So that's going to kind of dictate on what kind of gloss you have too. For us, the first one, you know, soaks in just a little bit. This has been sitting for a little while, um, but I'm not concerned with that because I know I'm going to hit it two more times anyway because that's just what we do. But uh, if you're having a hard time getting gloss and you're using a 30% solids or a 35% solids, you still can't get it glossy, maybe take a look at what sand you're using and how tight the surface is because if that's soaking in, that's going to affect your gloss. Um, so in that case, you're better off getting something that's 25% solids and just putting a couple extra coats on there because it's going to be the same and you might save yourself a little money. A lot of the guys that are using 35% solids, the sealer is so thick that it doesn't want to spray through their sprayer. So they have to cut it with xylene or acetone. Well, when you're cutting it, you're basically taking it down to a 20 to 25% solids now so it can spray through the sprayer. So you might as well just get the cheaper one and just do an extra coat. It's the same difference. All right, we're all done here. I <clears throat> just got to run a shovel and do some cleaning. Those are sealed with three coats three thin coats. We have probably uh, 165, 170 feet here and doing three coats of sealer. I probably used about two gallons of seal. Um, so it is what it is. I had one thing that I wanted to tell you before I forgot, you know, with white fences, I'm doing curbing along sidewalks or, you know, next to a driveway and you're stamping and you get a little bit of release powder on the concrete or on the fence uh, we have a lot of plastic fences here you know the, the polys and we've had issues where you know when I was broadcasting I would get some on the fence and try to get it off and it smears and it doesn't work the best thing to do for that and something that you should carry with you is a can of brake cleaner get a can of brake cleaner but don't try to wipe it off don't try to do anything just spray that brake cleaner on there and it will dissolve that release powder now integral color a little different story but the release powder you can just leave it there it'll dissolve that you can wash it off it will come off we've gone back to properties before where they've complained they got release on the sidewalk i could have dropped the you know something on there so i got some release whatever um we tried several different things and uh, i happen to have some brake cleaner with and uh sprayed it on there and boom it was gone so that's something that you might want to carry on your trailer um, just in case you get some on some concrete like this is new concrete you know go ahead and if you got a little bit on there you can spray it on there it would disappear